And here's something that Putin won't let slide for sure, NATO's expansion plans. The military alliance is conducting drills in the Arctic with a vow to protect their newest member, Finland. Alongside the drills, there's now a renewed push for Sweden's membership. Sweden had filed its application along with Finland last year. But they haven't been able to get through the finish line. Our next report tells you how Russia is responding. NATO has a new battleground to flex its muscles. The Arctic. With Finland joining the military alliance, the NATO's borders with Russia have now doubled. Hey, fuck it up. Hey, come down. That's why over 1,000 troops have gathered here. They're conducting military drills. These exercises have a clear objective. They are a demonstration of NATO's commitment to collective defense. So, if Finland comes under attack, all other 30 members will join forces to defend it. U.S. Army is here training to, uh, w with our newest uh, NATO ally uh, to build that capability to help defend Finland if, if, if anything happens. That's our commitment to them. Sweden wants the same privileges. It applied to join the NATO last year. Everyone is on board except for one, Turkey. Hungary too is yet to ratify Sweden's accession, but Turkey is seen as the main stumbling block. What are Ankara's objections? It's demanding action against the Kurdistan Workers' Party. Turkey calls it a terrorist group and accuses Sweden of harboring it. The United States is in no mood to wait anymore. This week, it decided to send a message. We urge both Turkey and, and Hungary, which is also not yet ratified, to ratify the session as quickly as possible. There is no reason for any further uh, time. Sweden is ready now. That decision should, be, uh, should move forward now. There is talk of a deal. Biden spoke to Erdogan recently. He hinted at a quid pro quo, American F-16 jets in exchange for Sweden's accession. I congratulated Erdogan, and uh, he, uh, he still wants to work on something on the F-15s. I told him we wanted to deal with Sweden until I get that done. So the U.S. is keen on cracking a deal. It's only a matter of time. But the bid to expand NATO comes at a sensitive time. Tensions are growing in Kosovo. The divided town of Zvekan is the flashpoint, where Serbs have engaged in fierce clashes with NATO peacekeepers. At least 30 soldiers were injured in the violence. Ethnic tensions have flared up again. Public anger erupted after ethnic Albanian mayors took office in Zvekan. This is an area dominated by ethnic Serbs. They had boycotted the elections in April. This allowed ethnic Albanians to take power. Today, they gathered again to demand the removal of a mayor. Dozens of protesters assembled outside a government building, as the NATO troops stood behind barbed wires and watched. Russia has weighed in. It holds the NATO troops responsible for the flare-up. A large eruption is brewing up in the center of Europe, in the very place where in 1999, NATO carried out an aggression against Yugoslavia, violating all possible principles of Helsinki Accords and other OSCE documents. The situation is alarming, but the West made total suppression of everyone who voices their own opinion about its policy. The conflict in Kosovo dates back to the 1990s, when Albanians rebelled against Serbia's rule. It led to a brutal crackdown. About 13,000 Albanians died. That's when NATO entered the region. A military intervention forced Serbia to pull out. Kosovo declared its independence in 2008. While ethnic Albanians make up more than 90% of the population in Kosovo, the Serbs dominate the north. Which is why thousands of NATO forces are still in the region, and they now have the challenge to restore peace. The NATO is deploying more troops. We have decided uh, to deploy 700 more troops uh, from the Operational Reserve Force for Western Balkans, and to put an additional battalion of reserve forces on high readiness 
so they can also be deployed if needed. European leaders are calling for a de-escalation. With tensions brewing on the front lines with Russia, the region can ill afford a conflict right at the center of the continent.